It's Mary Stewart, I'm 71, and I've lived in Dilmarnock since 1948. Oh, that's pretty wee. <laughs> and I remember, I can remember that dress. It was white with green polka dots. My favourite games was Kick the Can, Rounders, Hide and Seek, Kick Doors, Run Fast, or Child Pranks, really. I enjoyed love growing up in Dilmarnock. We watched the High Flats, the Masonettes, two community centres, a chapel. We watched all them being built and still here and watched it all getting pulled down again. It's quite upsetting, really. There's so many old ones all moved away or died off. You know, there's a lot of younger ones living here now than there used to be. Obviously, it's going to be with all the houses, new, bringing new people in and the new hub. But in a whole, the community all unite together. If you've not got two bob for a loaf or something, somebody will give you half a loaf. James Anderson, 64 year old, lived here all my life. You had pubs, you had cafes, people would go to cafes for your tea and then you'd go to pubs for a pint. Uh, I mean, you'd go to the shop to go, do the corner talking, don't see that now. Off with the market, I had jobs. In fact, in the way, 60s, 70s, everybody worked here. Only anybody unemployed. Very, very few. You can leave one job on a Friday. If that way on a Monday, was that easy? Take a job. Very easy. I'm to bring back industry here. Factories. And people who want to work. It's a very good place again. So hopefully that day will come. I'm Ruby Hunter. I was born and brought up in Dromanarch. I'm 54. At one point we had brownies. The guides. We did a club out in the chapel. We did a football, we did two football teams. We did a netball team. The land are building a community centre, which was a godsend, which I still see to this day should have remained. If they had that, then the Wains would have somewhere to go. Our organs would still have a lunch club. And as I say, the place wouldn't be so derelict. Because you've got a big bit of waste ground there. You've got waste ground over that end. You've got waste ground there. Everywhere you look, you could quite easily build shops or even build something that is a benefit to the monarch. My name is Mary Donnelly. I live in 17 Corner Street. The image, I don't tell me, that's private. <laughs> changes, I don't see any changes then, no in this place. <laughs> It'd be better if you shops and plenty of shops and everything, but in here, no change at all. Well, there used to be plenty of shops here at one time. Well, there used to be a fruit shop. There were a coppers, there were a butchers, there were a lingerie, there were a hairdresser, there were a cafe. Used to be an awful lot of shops in here at my time. I suppose they all, they all got knocked down, all demolished, and started pulling the buildings down, that was it. You can ask me that one, hey, what's the future? I wouldn't know, hey, what the future is, if I live that long. <laughs> well, I'd like to see it getting better. I really would. My name is John Kermichael, I'm 53 years of age. I was born and brought up in 55 Lilly Street in Dilmarnock. The best thing of living, being brought up in Dilmarnock, was the friendship. We started a football team there, and they were called the Cobbler Mullfield. They went on to become one of the most successful amateur teams in Glasgow. But more importantly, apart from being successful as a football team, they were all friends, and that was that probably sums up football in Dilmarnock, was the spirit and the affection that they had for each other. Football was my life in Dilmarnock. Uh, my name is John Flanagan, but most people in Dilmarnock will know me as Toby. I'm 38 years of age. It's hard to see Dilmarnock where it is just now because it's not thriving the way it was thriving. Uh, we had four high-rise flats that were full of people living on them, 22 flights, and every one of those houses were full. We, we, we kids growing up, going to school, there was over maybe 10,000 people lived in Dilmarnock when I was growing up, and now you think there's only maybe two and a half to 3,000 people. We'd been forgot about. Everywhere round about you would seem to be getting regeneration, put in new housing, uh, new facilities, schools, regen um, refurbished and things like that. Yet Dilmarnock was just left to, to ruin, basically. The games has changed everything, from road infrastructure to, to bringing jobs back, because a lot of people are still working, like the centre's still getting worked on at the moment, 
guys have worked on that village previously to the games coming and now they're, they're there making it ready for the housing transfer. You know what I mean? We've got a state-of-the-art facility up there in the Chris Hoy Velodrome where the young people can access cycling through youth groups and things like that. We've we'll also got the, the run, indoor running track, the gyms for basketball, badminton, things like that. So there's a great facility there right on my doorstep. And also, our rail link has been updated. We've got a brand new train station. So some, some good things coming up, but also some bad. We've still not got a shop. But that's that's something hopefully that we're working on at the moment. So, but all in all, it's, the games were really good for the Malik, I would say. My name's John McGregor. Uh, I'm fifty nine. I've never enough stayed in Dumano all my life. This will be the uh, this is about the third Dumano Cano. It's came online. Well, I think it's going to be yet again a new Dumano because the people that's coming in, we will have to explain the past what was here and it's going to be for the better because it's all incoming and hopefully there'll be jobs there's a lot of potential re-energise the banner and bring it back together the way it was because when you look at the 66 you could see that that's when it was a community you could go for close for close and know everybody that was in, every close sort of thing. You could see them all coming out of the church as a community, all together, and everybody was the same. There was no lock on the door, because we all had the same, we all had none. But now we've got something, and I think we should expand and bring the community together, and hopefully that's going to be the way forward. It's, the legacy is going to continue.